Hello and Happy New Year! For my first video of 2019, I wanted to talk a little bit about my switch from strings to rings. I made this switch a little under two months ago, so I'm starting to feel a little more comfortable in my ring bound. My reasoning for the switch is sort of a process, but what it boils down to is that I really wanted a little more flexibility in my individual pages and my sections without the effort and commitment of a bullet journal, which is part of what I'd been doing in my traveler's notebook. So I will start with where I was, and then I will talk about where I am. So what I was using before was primarily a B6 traveler's notebook. This is a Foxy Fix Spice Saffron. The leather is Spice Saffron. The brand is Foxy Fix for anyone unfamiliar. And I was using this for the last few months. What's special about this, and this will come into play in a little bit, is that it has this big back pocket. Um, I was switching this out sometimes with a Chic Sparrow B6 as well. This is the Outlander Jitney Red Leather, which has been discontinued. And it has a different pocket structure, and it does not have the big back pocket. So a little bit different in terms of organization options. I have a more in-depth flip through of this traveler's notebook and my B6 setup in general in another video. For the sake of this video, I'll just do a quick overview of how I was using it. So I had four primary sections. You can see four notebooks. Um, this is a compact, which means four strings, and the same goes for my Chic Sparrow. That's my preference. I don't like a wide or any more than six strings, even though I do like to have more than four sections sometimes. Um, how I made that work in here was with a bullet journal type system. So my first insert was my agenda, or sort of my personal and weekly section. So I have personal events, holidays, things like that. And then I had my annual and monthly tracker. And then from there I go into my weeklies. Uh, the reason I began a bullet journal in here was mostly to customize my weekly layout. Um, I did do a sort of standardized layout in here once I had figured out what I liked. I did a week on one page on the left and then varied sections on the right but usually they included a to-do section, a work section, notes, and a habit tracker. Um, after my weekly I had personal lists and notes and that is just as it sounds. Shows to watch, books to read, recipes, and then notes, things like that. Then I had my work tasks, and I used a categorized, ongoing master task list. I use this exact same format in my ring bound now, but I have a special insert for it. Uh, this actual layout was inspired by a Peanuts Planner Co. printable, which I use that very printable in my ring bound now. And that also factored into my decision to use a ring bound, the ability to use certain, specifically Peanuts Planner Co. printable inserts. Finally, I had my work notes, which is just a grid in which I wrote work notes. So my first sort of itch for change came from this bullet journal weekly. I enjoyed it for a little bit. I still love the layout, but a couple months into doing it, it did become a little much for me drawing it out, even the simplified layout. I would say I'm more of a crafty than an artistic person, and so this did become a little burdensome for me. I began searching for a printed insert that I could buy that would sort of replicate this. There are a number of inserts that have this style of horizontal week on one page, but I really had difficulty finding one that I liked the layout of on the 
opposite page. It was either too little information, too much, not enough space, what have you, and I really never did narrow it down. I will say I also did not pay too much attention to printables for the Traveler's Notebook. I've tried printables for Traveler's Notebooks before, and I just hate it. I hated the whole process. It was so difficult for me. It was so time consuming. Um, just on the pros versus cons list of strings to rings, something about printables for the Traveler's Notebook is that, of course, these are bound books. This particular one is sewn, as is this one. The other two are stapled. Um, so you really either need to make your peace with having loose leaf pages in your planner. I'm trying to find the center of this notebook to slip it back in. Or you need to figure out a way to sew your notebooks, which I did a couple times but didn't care for. Or you need really a specialized stapler or some sort of other system to make that work. So that was not my preference. While I was in a traveler's notebook, I had long admired Peanuts Planner Co. inserts. Um, as I said, my work tasks layout is inspired by one of her inserts, and I kept hoping that she would make traveler's notebook inserts so that I could use them myself. But I didn't really start considering the switch until I pulled out this guy for a Throwback Thursday. Uh, I did it, I want to say in early November, shortly before I switched actually. This was a gift from my husband's grandmother. It is an old, beautiful ring bound. It is a personal size. It is from Bullock's, which is a department store that closed many years ago. I've always loved it. I love the size. I love the feel. But of course, when I received it, I was not in ring bound. So after I took it off my shelf to show it, uh, just handling it really started appealing to me. And I thought, what the hell? Let's just try some stuff. So that was really my, my moment of decision. It was very quick very impulsive. I'm fortunate it has worked out as well as it has because I also put almost zero thought into the size of the inserts. I didn't try out any, which is against my own advice for choosing a traveler's notebook. I really jumped into it very quickly. And fortunately I have no regrets. I will say about the size for anyone curious, the size of a personal ring bound cover is very close to the size of a B6 traveler's notebook cover. So that falls into, I would say, the con category of a ring bound planner in that the ratio of inserts to cover size is not as good as the ratio for a traveler's notebook in order to accommodate the space those rings take up. So for any of you curious, that's about what you're looking at. And it is the same, of course, for my Vanderspeck, which is a little bit bigger, but still pretty comparable to a B6 Traveler's Notebook. So this did not come until later. What I did was initially switch into this guy. So how I started on this journey, even though I made the decision to switch very quickly and I chose the size based on what I had, so little thought went into that, the sections and the inserts I put a great deal of thought and planning into. So how I started with that, I actually just dug this out of the uh, trash for this very video. Fortunately, my office trash had not yet been taken out, so lucky for us. But so this was my initial list here. I started similarly to my traveler's notebook. I had a personal work and sort of miscellaneous section, which for me is a catch-all for lists and notes. But I, of course, dared to dream a little bit on this. So I also added a hobby section and a goals and project section. Uh, that was specifically because I saw a goal planner insert that I really liked 
and I wanted to try to incorporate it in here. So after I had my main sections, I started imagining the subsections that I'd want for each. And I left space, as you can see, under each for other things that I found. So for example, I originally just had work tasks and notes, the same thing I had in my traveler's notebook. And then as I was on the hunt, I found a work travel planner insert that I really liked as well, and I was able to add that in. So after I had all of my envisioned sections, and excuse my extra little scratches here, this is just scrap paper. After that, I began searching for the perfect insert for each section. So that I did over the course of a couple of weeks. I gave myself a full month, although I did it a little faster, but I gave myself a month to set it up because I did not want to rush and invest in the wrong insert. However, another check in the pro list of a ring bound is that, at least for me, the printables were a million times easier. And that's because they are, of course, individual little pages that you can either print out on paper that is the correct size, or what I do, I print out on 11 by 8, right, 8.5, standard letter size paper, and then cut it down. But I didn't need to make booklets. I swore against printables for traveler's notebooks, but when I switched to ring bound, the world of printables opened up to me again. So because of that, the investment in each insert was much smaller and it wasn't as big of a deal if I ended up not liking it. It was a much smaller commitment to spend, you know, $3 on an insert, print a couple pages, try them out, not like them. It's not an entire notebook that I spent, for example, almost $10 on or more per insert. And then if I didn't like it, it was an entire notebook wasted and it was significantly more money. So, I dared to dream. I chose all my inserts. I printed them out as I had them uh, selected. And then as I was printing them, I used just um, colored tab sticky notes to mark my sections and subsections. So as I said, I had sections on the top, so you can see my little list. So for example, personal was a section, agenda, annual tracker, and purchase tracker were my subsections. How I organized it and then chose to put it in my planner ultimately was exactly as this guy had it, top and side, sections and subsections. That seemed right to me. Once I had everything printed and tabbed off, I inserted it in the planner, and then I started to revise my system, and that's where this side comes in. Once it was all in the planner, that was easy. I just started moving things around, changing up my tabs to fit, and when I was satisfied with that, I called that a day. So I used this planner for a little bit, I did pretty quickly begin looking at other planners though because even though I love this one, I love the feel of it, and I love the fact that it's special to me and my loved ones, um, ultimately the storage, pocket configuration, all that just was not ideal for me. This one has one card pocket, one secretarial, and one sort of um, top slip pocket. I would imagine this would hold, say, a note or list pad, a smaller one. And it did also have a oops, card holder, pretty snug card holder, and a couple slip pockets that were on the rings. But that was not my preferred style. And more importantly, as I said before, I had become quickly accustomed to this back pocket. So I was missing that. So I began to just look around, see what else was on the market. And that's when I came across Vanderspeck. The two big makers of ring bound are Vanderspeck, of, I'm sorry, of luxury ring bounds. There are several makers of ring bounds, but Vanderspeck and Gilio. Other makers are Foxy Fix, Kiki K, Filofax, 
Webster's Pages makes a very affordable ring bound. And actually I had once before been in an A5 Webster's Pages at the very beginning of my planner journey. But at that time, uh, ring bound, the level of personalization was just too much beyond me. And also A5 is just not my size too big. But um, a note about ring bounds, something I learned through this whole process and a tick in the cons column, I would say. Both the cost floor and cost ceiling, I would say, is a fair bit higher for ring bound planners. I would imagine the reasoning for this are, of course, the ring mechanisms. Uh, Vanderspec comes with Krauss rings, as do Julio and Foxy Fix, which is a very nice, I guess, I've, I've been told, a very nice ring maker, I guess, maybe the best ring maker. But it is very difficult to find a ring bound as cheaply as you can find a traveler's notebook. Also, the upper end of ring bound planners are also significantly more expensive than the upper end of traveler's notebooks. I would say Chic Sparrow and Foxy Fix are some of the nicer brands out there and they're going to run usually under a hundred dollars for most sizes. Um, I guess maybe around there. For Chic Sparrow B6, for example, a B6 Deluxe, so B6 with pockets, is in the neighborhood of 80. For Foxy Fix, it's a little over 100, maybe 120 if I'm remembering correctly. And then both of these have buy-sell trade groups that you can get it for a better price. And those are the deluxe versions. There are classic versions that I'll talk a little about in a second as well. However, so this is the Vanderspec. It is, like the others, a real leather. This particular one is about $150, and that is the cheapest that you can find at Vanderspec, at least in the personal size. There are also a pocket and a mini size. I do not know as much about them. I won't go into them. But what I'm getting at, this is the Vanderspec's ready-made line. Once you get into their customizables, you are easily looking at $300 to $500 planners, and the same goes for Gilio. So, much higher ranges for the top of the line than for Traveler's Notebooks. The other difference between a ring bound and Traveler's Notebook is, so this is another B6, and it is a <clears throat> classic with no stitching by Chic Sparrow. It is an Outlander wine, also disconnect or uh, discontinued. But as you can see, it is very simple, very close to natural materials, I guess I want to say. You can see the inside of the leather. It really does just look like a piece of leather with some elastic through it. And that's essentially what it is. And that also makes it very easy to make it home with either leather or other materials. Ring bounds, while well, people have made them, of course, more difficult to do because you have to attach the rings. So, whereas with a traveler's notebook, all you'd really need to do for a base model is punch the holes. So, for a more cost-effective planner, the traveler's notebook definitely is. However, as I mentioned before, what really appealed to me about the ring bound is the flexibility of individual pages and also of uh, mixed media. So a couple things that are similar between my two setups are these annual trackers. However, I had to draw these in my bullet journal. Here it is a single insert that I only had to print a couple pages of and I still get the same amount in there. I use a week on one page in here and it's quite a bit smaller than what I was working with in my traveler's notebook because I was able to disseminate that second page of information into other sections. I also have my, as I said, my work task tracker 
And this is a principle from Peanuts Planner Co. that started my whole love affair with the possibility of ring bound. But instead of an entire notebook and therefore an entire section committed to it, I have just a few pages in here so it doesn't take up as much space. And I have plenty of real estate left for other sections. Something else kind of nice about the ring bound as well is that so these were dashboards for my pocket planner back in the day, the day being early 2018 and beforehand. I had to step away for a second. My cat wanted in, then my cat wanted immediately back out, of course. But when I switched from pocket to B6, a lot of my decorative pieces didn't come with me. They didn't fit so nicely in the B6. However, when I switched into ring bound, I was able to split them and punch them, and I have them again. So a pro in the ring bound list is that switching pieces between sizes is much easier to do. In terms of mixed media between the two, uh, there's actually a pro and a con I'd say for each. For ring bound, what I was kind of getting at is that, so for example in here I have graph, and I also have, let's see here, I have lined, I have checklists, I have my project planner, I have do you get what I'm getting at? I have so many different types of papers and inserts, and if I wanted to, I could have thicker paper if I wanted to do something a little artsier. If I was using different pens for different purposes, I could change up what I have going on in here, which I would be hard pressed to do in a traveler's notebook unless I had custom designed or custom bound a notebook. However, a lot of people who use traveler's notebooks will use them to hold maybe both inserts and hardbound books, like a bullet journal, like a um, Scribbles That Matter, a Rhodia, so on and so forth. I'm not going to say it can't be done in a ring bound because I've seen people be awfully creative in fitting all that they want in one Franken planner but it's not nearly as easy as just slipping it through some rings or into a back pocket. It's gonna take some some work to fit all of your elements in terms of different books into a ring bound. And I missed this a little bit earlier, but as I mentioned, back pocket. So that was another appeal to me of the Vanderspeck. One last difference between the Traveler's Notebook and the ring bound are decoration options. So for a typical traveler's notebook, get out of here, you'll have these elastics on the top and bottom. For this style of foxy, you will not because it's covered by that second butt pocket, but you do still have the crossing elastic. So for things like charms, that's more difficult than a ring bound. I do have a zipper in this guy, which I've managed to add a charm to. But just if there are certain uh, decorational aspects that you really like in a traveler's notebook, some won't cross over as well all the time. So like if you don't have a zipper pocket and therefore no zipper, there's really not a place to clip on a charm. Although you can maybe fashion something else for it. I will say as one last note as well, Foxy Fix does make this style of planner in a ring bound, which is to say they have rings with an elastic closure. There are all kinds of options, but this is a basic overview between the two. Whew. Thanks for listening to me ramble about it. I hope it was helpful. Please let me know if you have any questions that I can answer. And I so appreciate you watching. All right, bye.